Richarlison was one of Brazil's best players at the 2022 World Cup. Not only did he score the goal of the tournament, but he was also involved in almost every goal scored by Brazil during the tournament. And in Brazil, he is one of the most beloved players at the moment. But in England, the story is very, very different. Constantly under critique from media and pundits, his life isn't easy. But if we go back in time, we'll see that Richarlison's journey was actually doomed from the very beginning. You see, he came from a broken home. His parents split up when he was just seven years old, leaving his mum to take care of the family all by herself. It was very tough for her to provide for the family alone. So when Richarlison was a little older, he started working on the streets to help her out. He started washing cars and got a job harvesting coffee beans on the farm. No 11-year-old should be doing that, but he didn't really have a choice. The only other choice at that time would have ended him dead or behind bars. You see, most of his friends at the time had already started selling drugs for major drug lords and cashing out big time. They looked down on him for taking the more difficult path and making much less money. But Richarlison knew the fast life wouldn't last long and that many of his friends would end up in jail at any point in time. Richarlison had made the right choice for himself, but living in a bad neighborhood meant he couldn't escape from the chaos. And surely, one night, young Richarlison almost got shot whilst walking home. Him and a friend had just played football on their local pitch when suddenly two men stopped them. One of the men pulled out a gun and pointed it straight at the two kids. Richarlison and his friend were overwhelmed with fear. The man told them that they would never sell drugs on their streets ever again. It was clear the man had gone after the wrong kids. Richarlison tried to explain to the armed man that this was a mistake. He begged him telling the man that he had never sold drugs before, but the man didn't budge. The man pointed the gun at Richarlison's head, and as he stared down the barrel of the gun, he waited in fear for the bullet that would fly out and end his life once and for all. But luckily for the two kids, the man had a last minute change of heart and decided to let them go. But I'm sure this is the kind of experience that scars you for life. And after this evening, Richarlison knew his only way out was to chase his football dream. He traveled all over Brazil, trying out for various football clubs, but with no success at all. At this point, Richarlison started rethinking his life choices. Maybe football wasn't going to work out for him after all. Maybe he should try something else. He kept on playing for his local club, but then a few years later, at the age of 17, he had an experience that would change the course of his life forever. You see, one day, him, his cousins, and his father decided to go out fishing in a pond on the land where his father worked. Now, there were three ponds on this land, and the owner had explicitly told Richarlison's father to never, ever go fishing in the third pond. So, they knew there wouldn't ever be anyone at the third pond, so he and his cousins went over there. And after a few hours, they still hadn't caught any fish, but they didn't really care. They still had a lot of fun together. But it started getting dark, and they decided to leave for home. But, right before they left, Richarlison jokingly cast his rod one last time into the pond. And finally, he ended up catching a fish. Everyone was screaming with joy, but while he was reeling it in, the landowner spotted them, ran over to them, and started hurling hurtful insults at his father. The landowner called his father a nobody and told him that he could be back on the streets at any time if he wasn't careful. It was bad enough for his father to be humiliated like that, but in front of his teenage son? This day really marked Richarlison as he saw the pain in his father's eyes. And from that point onwards, he made it his life's mission to get his dad out of this misery. He decided that a football career was the only way out and the dream had to become a reality no matter what it would take. Step one of his mission to success was a bus ticket to Belo Horizonte so he could try out for America Mineiro. So after saving up for months, he finally had enough money to get a ticket. He also had enough money for a return ticket, but when he eventually got there, his stomach had other plans. He was so hungry that he bought food instead. There was no way out at that point. His only ticket out of Belo Horizonte and his life of poverty 
was a pro contract. That same afternoon, he played four matches and impressed absolutely everyone with his mesmerizing skills. And when the day was over, the club director asked him to come to his office, and that's when Richarlison's life changed forever. He finally got what he had always dreamed of. He was offered a professional contract. After getting signed, Richarlison unleashed the beast inside of him and started scoring for fun. He scored so many goals that he led America Mineiro's under-17 team to their first championship title in over 17 years. He then immediately got called up to the senior squad the year after, and he wasn't going to waste any time. His debut game was against Mogi Miriam, against the legendary player Rivaldo and his son, and after only 10 minutes on the pitch, Richarlison had already scored his first goal. Everyone knew he had the potential to become a superstar, but what happened to him five matches later really shocked the world. Richarlison had been so impressive that he was offered a sponsorship by Nike while still playing in the Brazilian Second League. And so, in his new Nike boots, Richarlison continued to do wonders, scoring so many goals that he ended up helping America Mineiro to be promoted to the first league. With high-level performances like this, it was only a matter of time before bigger teams came knocking. And they did. Fluminense paid just over $2.5 million for only 50% of his rights. And with this, he was finally able to fulfill his dream he could get his dad out of the ranch and into his own house. But this transfer came with some doubts. The fans were not too keen on Richarlison, most likely because he injured his toe in training and had to get surgery even before playing a single game for the club. But he quickly proved everyone wrong when he got back. He scored seven goals and got six assists in his first season, even though he got very little playing time due to injury. His name started to spread far and wide, and soon enough, Dutch giant Ajax came knocking at the door. This was a dream opportunity for Richarlison to join a team full of young and motivated players like himself. And after months and months of talking, the only thing left to do was for Richarlison to put his signature on the contract. But right as he was about to pick up the pen, another club came knocking. Watford. Now, for anyone looking from the outside in, Ajax was the obvious choice. They were giants in their own league. He'd be getting much more time on the field and would get much more exposure than in the Premier League. But Richarlison didn't look at it the same way. For him, a chance to play in the English Premier League was a no-brainer. He fell in love with the EPL when he was only a child and never missed a chance to watch a game at his uncle's house back in the day. So when Watford came to him, he quickly signed the contract, even though they were offering far less money than the Dutch. And going to England wasn't easy. Richarlison didn't speak any English at all. The cold weather was the complete opposite of the hot weather in Brazil, and the food was not quite what he was used to. He couldn't eat anything much when he first joined Watford, and he lost over five kilos in only five weeks. But through it all, he weathered the storm calmly. He had a quick start at Watford, scoring five goals and bagging three assists, leading the team to its best start in the Premier League. And this didn't go unnoticed. Everton started looking at Watford, but they weren't looking for Richarlison just yet. They wanted Watford's manager, Marco Silva. But every single offer for Marco was rejected, and this actually started the snowball effect that ended up making Richarlison one of, if not the most hated man in England. You see, Marco actually wanted to leave for Everton, but Watford didn't let him. And Marco Silva was furious about it. He saw the Everton move as a great opportunity. And the rest of the season was very, very bad for Watford. They only ended up scoring 11 points out of their next 15 games, and Marco Silva was eventually sacked. Richarlison was furious about this and tweeted some angry statements. But it only got worse after that. He went on to miss every single shot he had for six months straight and only ended up getting one assist. But Marco Silva didn't care. He was now working for Everton and wanted Richarlison no matter what. And so they ended up paying just over $60 million for him. At that same time, Richarlison was called up to the Brazilian national team and was given the coveted number nine. Playing alongside Neymar was a dream come true for him. Neymar has been an idol of mine since childhood. 
I've always tried to mirror myself in the way he plays, and I've also tried imitating some of his haircuts. When I was 12 or 13, I had the yellow Mohican. I didn't quite pull it off though because I didn't have the right hair products, he said in an interview. And when he got to the Brazilian national team, his impact was instant. He scored two goals in his second game and became the new golden boy. He went back to Everton and continued his run of good form, scoring three goals in his first two matches. He also scored important goals against Chelsea and Manchester United to secure shocking wins for his Everton. He won the award for Young Player of the Year and got called up to the Brazilian national team again for the 2019 Copa America, where one of the biggest moments in his life was waiting for him. In the dying minutes of the final game, Brazil won a penalty. Richarlison was called upon to take the penalty and in this high pressure moment, he showed the world that he had balls of steel and planted the ball perfectly into the goal. He had just won the Copa America for his country. But I know what you're thinking. How the hell did he end up being so hated then? This seems like a flawless career, right? Well, it's at this exact point in time that darkness started brewing for Richarlison. You see, his coach Marco Silva was sacked and Carlo Ancelotti was his replacement. He had very high expectations of Richarlison, expectations that he wasn't going to live up to. The 2020-2021 season started quite well for Richarlison, with four goals and two assists, but after these first few games, there was a drastic change of pace for the Brazilian. The frustration was getting to him now. Some of his actions on the field and social media posts showed that he just wasn't happy at Everton. Things were pretty dark for him at the time. Richarlison wanted and needed redemption. Everyone thought the 2021 Copa America tournament would be the time and place for it. But it didn't happen. He scored only one goal in the entire tournament and didn't even get a single assist. But he tried again at the Olympic Games, and this time things were completely different. He had to beg Everton to let him miss the start of the season, but they eventually agreed. In his first match, he wore the number 10 jersey that was once worn by Pele. His teammate and friend, Danny Alves, expressed some worry about the shirt number and said, You know with that number on your back, you will have to score, right? The pressure was on. The game was against Germany, and guess what? Richarlison scored a hat-trick in the match. His impact showed during the entire tournament, and he ended up being the top scorer and winning the gold medal with Brazil. But things quickly went downhill when he came back to England. Everton was now led by Rafa Benitez, and Richarlison was riddled with injuries, and once again, he didn't score any goals for months on end, relegating him to the shadow of the spotlight he once occupied. But every time he played for Brazil, however, he continued to show what a top-class player he was, scoring four goals in four games that same year. And Tottenham thought, you know what, maybe Everton's the problem. So let's pay another $60 million to sign him, and surely he'll perform for us as he does with Brazil. Right? Well, no. Once again, he had a horrific season, struggling with injuries and scoring only two goals in 15 matches for Spurs. But at the same time, he was still banging in goals for Brazil. He has started 27 games for Brazil and has now scored 20 goals. This is more than any other player in the current squad, even more than his idol Neymar. And it just happened again during the World Cup in Qatar. He scored three goals and most importantly, scored the goal of the tournament. So that's exactly why he is so hated in England. He's just a completely different person when he plays for the English clubs. But the question remains, why is Richarlison such a beast for Brazil, but so incredibly underwhelming for these English clubs? And will he ever live up to expectations on club level, or will he only be remembered as a national hero and nothing more? Let me know what you think in the comments and I'll be sure to respond to as many as I can. Thanks again for the recent support and watch this video on screen now. I've handpicked it for you.